Hey guys, welcome back to another video. James here, and today we're going to check out the Square Affinity Jaws bass in Burgundy Mist. So if you're like me and you wanted to pick up a bass for home recording, or if this is your first bass, then the Square Affinity Jaws is probably a really great choice. They have a P bass and they also have the Jaws bass version. I specifically picked the Jaws because I used to own a Square P bass and I just fancied something different. I really loved the offset shape of the Jaws and also the cool colours that Square are now releasing the Affinity range in. This is Burgundy Mist. It was originally a Fender custom colour back in the day. And if you're like me, most of my guitars are black, white, really plain colours. Um, so I really thought this would add a nice bit of colour to my collection. So to get into some of the specs of the guitar, the body is poplar. The burgundy mist finish is a polyester finish, so it is quite um, thick. It won't chip easily. Um, it's got quite a thick gloss on the top. We've got a maple neck and an laurel, Indian laurel fingerboard. Now, as you can tell, the fingerboard, even though it does resemble rosewood, it is a bit lighter. This can be darkened up with either some fingerboard oil, like lemon oil or F1 oil from Music Nomad, or Monty's in the UK make, I'm pretty sure they make like a stain finish, I'll probably stick a picture of it up here, that'll darken the fingerboard quite nicely. I think that's one of the things I'm going to do. We've got a 9.5 inch radius and a 34 inch scale. The pickups are square ceramic J-Bass pickups, so we obviously have two single coils here um, with a volume for the neck, a volume for the bridge and an overall tone. So let's get into some sounds, as you would have heard the intro, I was using the bass wide open, both pickups, tone full on. I'll just now, I'll give you just the neck pickup, um, just so you can hear it. I'll play with a pick, I'll play with my fingers, then I'll do the same for the bridge, and then I'll adjust the tone through each, I'll just sweep through, and then I'll play it full on, just so we can get an idea. Let's start off with the neck pickup. Now onto the bridge. Now both pickups on, wide open, tone full up. About the two and a half way. And now the tone rolled all the way off. Tone rolled all the way off in the neck pickup. Halfway. And then wide open. Tone all the way off on the bridge pickup. Halfway. And wide open.
So as you can hear, it's got that classic jazz bass tone. Now, mind you, pickups can always be swapped, but at the price range of the guitar, the pickups sound fine. The hardware is just a standard individual four-string saddle bridge, so you can intonate and set the action really well. Now, some of the fit and finish. Now, I was really surprised that the back of the neck feels as great as it does. It's got a slight, really thin satin finish by the feel of it. Um, quite thin at the top of the neck, which is easy to get your hands around and widens up a little bit as we get down to the 12th fret. Now, the 9.5 inch radius is super easy to play. Coming from a guitar that I play normally has got a 9.5 inch radius, this makes it really easy for me to fret and I don't play bass all the time, just makes it a little bit easier. Now, with the Affinity series, they do say that the body is slimmed down and so is the neck. I find that the neck is just perfect. I've got normal-ish, maybe on the bigger side size hands, and I can play it. It's not cramped, it doesn't feel too thin. Um, it kind of fills my hand nicely as we go further up the neck, but a lot of the times I'm recording, I'm staying above the 12th fret anyway. And now getting on to the pick guard, um, fine, plastics are fine. The one thing that does arc me a little bit is that the metal plate in the corner of the pick guard, I'll get some zoomed in shots, doesn't actually meet up. The metal plate sticks out a little bit. Just a little thing that annoys me, but again, I don't have much to complain about at this price point. I can't really complain about parts when the guitar is literally the cost of some guitar pedals. Um, a couple of things that fit and finish from a factory, again, are the pit guard screws. It seems like this guitar was maybe a Friday afternoon job, as a lot of them are in at an angle, not straight in. Again, not something that everybody notices, but for me, it's the kind of thing that if I see it, I don't unsee it. But apart from that, the actual finish on the body itself um, looks to me perfect. I got it fresh out of the box. Um, when it came into a local shop and the strings that are on it I guess are just a normal maybe 100 to 45 gauge bass string it suits me fine but out of the box perfect for someone just picking it up it was actually set up quite well but little things like pickup height weren't set but at this price point I'm not expecting it to play amazing out the box I'm probably expecting it to do a little bit of work now fret ends surprisingly don't stick out um, compared to the square I had before that was a vintage modified so a bit higher end than this one that had a great neck this being one of the entry level squares the finish on the neck is actually really really great the fret ends don't stick out there's no joggy ends um, they, they could probably be done with a little bit of a polish but again that's just extra set of work that would add to the cost tuners um, and like I've mentioned the bridge they're okay um, they will get you through any gig. I think if you are really looking at upgrading components, I'd probably say tuners and bridge first. Um, the pickups sound fine. Apart from that, this is just a great starting base, especially for the cost, especially at the price. Um, especially at the cost, especially at the price. Yep, same thing. Um, especially with the finish colours, you get this, um, get this base in the burgundy mist, you get it in a charcoal frost. Um, which again are vintage vendor colours that you don't normally see in the square range and I'm really glad that they have taken them out because it means it gives everybody <laughs> who maybe is sick fed up of the black, white, um, red, blue <laughs> base colours that you used to get them in. You get them in some nice vintage custom colours that would normally be on higher end bases say in the 500 to 1000 pound range and upwards. So again, I think Square have smashed out of the park with this. Some little gripes and fit and finish that I've already mentioned, but a great playing bass all round. And for me, something that I'm just going to stick with. I record with it at home. I'll maybe fill in in church if they need me to because I've got a bass, or fill in in a gig with friends because I've got a bass now. Um, it's just one of those things. It's really handy to have, especially as a guitar player who records at home and nine times out of ten is normally recording at most of my own backing tracks for videos like you'll see and then the rest of my channel and I just really um, like it. What drew it to me was the colour um, and obviously the price and now the playability because it plays great and sounds great it's really tweakable. Now today I've been running everything through a um, amp sim in Logic which I'll post a photo of here it's just when it comes in Logic, it's pretty accessible. It was the first one it pulled up when I pulled up bass. So <laughs> don't kill me in the comments for not using a specific amp model or if it sounded bad or good. 
it's just a basic bass tone that you can then modify um, when you're recording. So guys, if there's any more questions about the bass or if you want to hear any more sound examples, you will definitely be seeing it in more videos to come. And like always, leave a comment down below if you've got anything else and I will catch you guys in the next one.